Imagine a lifestyle where your career took the main seat. Now, imagine that this focus came at the cost of every other aspect of being a human. Your friends, your family, your hobbies, even your health. You don't have to imagine, because it's real. And it's called hustle culture. It's a mindset that encourages hard work, allegedly in the pursuit of glory. If you're sleeping, it's because it gives you a slight edge. If you're eating, it's to fuel yourself to work more. And if God forbid you're partying, it comes with guilt. Because while you're partying, your competitors are smoking you, bruh. On one hand, hustle culture is a better vice than, say, drinking three bottles of vodka a day, and it can help you get out of a rut. But let's be honest, it's not hard to see how this mindset is flawed. And yet, not too long ago, it looked so attractive to me. In fact, I even tried it for three whole years. In this video, I'm going to talk about six big lessons that I've learned since I've given up hustle culture and the movement that I think is taking its place. But first, here's my story. The first time I heard about hustle culture, it felt right. It appealed to something deep within me that desperately wanted to change my life. It was 2015 and I was a textbook unhappy guy. I'd gone from druggy dropkick to corporate advertising guy who drinks a bottle of wine every night. I don't know which one's better, to be honest. But one day in that advertising job, I started working with this lady from New York City. She had just quit her previous agency to work with ours and her previous agency was called Vayner Media. I said, oh, what was that like working there? And she goes, well, you know, the CEO, Gary V. And I'm like, no. She's like, you don't know Gary V? Really? She told me about this obnoxious but charismatic guy who simultaneously shat on corporate America while also profiting off it. If you want to have one of the best lives in the world, which is you live on your terms, you have to pay your dues to get there. I was hooked. I started listening to his podcast. I put it on in my morning commute and just get fired up. You know the feeling. And then meanwhile, I was admiring Casey Neistat's ability to make a vlog every single day. There was this sense that with massive effort came massive rewards. And the cool thing about that is effort is democratized. Anybody can put an effort. It wasn't about talent, it was about hard work. If you worked the hardest, you'd win. Cool. Suddenly rewards felt available to me. I got better at my job. I even flew over to New York a couple of times to work with this lady. I ended up being the creative director and writer on nine Gatorade commercials and even one for the NFL. It really felt like my dreams were coming true, but there was one big problem. I realized that no matter how hard I worked in my corporate job, I would only ever be making somebody else's dream come true. I wasn't building my empire, I was building theirs, man. So I did what any ambitious, childless person would do, and I quit that job to start my own thing. The plan was to build an apparel company based on my illustrations. And once again, I was hooked. Doing this gave me a huge surge of energy and motivation, but as we're soon gonna learn, this was sadly temporary. I was still listening to Gary V, so in my head, my plan was just to grind seven days a week, 365 days a year. I was gonna outwork the competition. Mm. And so for three years, from the start of 2016 to the start of 2019, I did exactly that. And then I stopped. But why? Why did I stop? Well, to answer that, I'm gonna have to take you through the six lessons that I've learned since I stopped hustling. <laughs> Can't take myself seriously with that word. I'm on the couch now. Grind set, baby. New angle too. Lesson one, hustle culture is deeply unsustainable. This is probably the most obvious insight and most of us know it, so I won't dwell on it. I was young and I had a lot of desperation to change my life, so I used it. But using desperation as your energy source 100% of the time turns out is super unhealthy. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it gets things done, but not forever. My main goal was just to be in a different place to where I was, but this would eventually catch up with me in the form of burnout. More on that later. Which leads me to the controversial lesson. Lesson two, hustling worked for the goals that I had set. This feels kind of taboo to say, but yeah, working every single day had positive results, amongst of course the negative ones. But for those three years, I drew a comic every single day and I ended up going from zero Instagram followers to about 200,000, so that was a result. But in saying that, I do feel like I need to clarify why it worked and why I don't think it'll work moving forward for at least me. It worked because I was young, I had energy and a lot of hunger. I didn't have overheads, nobody suffered if I went broke. And as poorly scripted movie dialogue as this sounds, yeah, I had nothing to lose. Now I'm still relatively young, driven and hungry, but with one big difference. And that is I value myself and my sanity so much more. Back then I had a lot of self-hatred and the work that I made came from a place of just disgust. Disgust with how complacently I'd been living my life and I just really wanted to outwork those bad feelings. If I suffered, which I did a lot, it was because I deserved it. Now I value my mental clarity a lot higher than I value grinding. So what changed? Well, this did. Lesson three, you can get more done if you take breaks. 
The idea of getting more done is still very much rooted in hustle culture, but the idea of getting more done while taking breaks was my gateway drug into a balanced life. At the start of 2019, I was asked to paint a private mural. I love the idea. It was a coat of arms of a beagle and an ibis with the word Marrickville, which is one of Sydney's suburbs underneath it. And it was just a bunch of Marrickville iconography. It was a fun job. I was also starting to toy with the idea of making YouTube videos because I'd seen this new wave of creators pop up. People like Matt Diavella, Kelly Stamps, Nathaniel Drew, Sav Brown and Hines. I discovered this side of YouTube on the day that I painted that mural and it blew my mind. These creators felt like they were representing a new way to get things done. Suddenly it felt possible to chase your dreams and have a balanced life. It wasn't one or the other. I took fierce notes. It was a vulnerable time in my life actually, early 2019. It coincided with three close deaths. We lost my two remaining grandparents and my sister's lifelong best friend who was a big presence in our lives died from a heroin overdose. Life felt really, really fragile. But I started noticing this change and that was I began to value mental clarity. To get more of it, I needed more space in my schedule to think. So I took my foot off the accelerator and spent a bit more time in my head and I made a really big discovery. Lesson four, work is an addiction. Just like drugs when I was younger, I was using work to escape and run from myself. But why? What was so horrible about me that I had to run? Later that year, I'd open up to my partner Felicity and my mom about being sexually abused as a kid. It was a major childhood trauma, but my plan was to die with it. Just keep it a secret and end up in the grave. To make sure I never thought about it again, I guess my subconscious method was just to fill my life to the brim with stuff. If it wasn't drugs, it was travel, and when those things didn't get me high, it became work. It became hustle. Gary Vee's message, by no fault of his own, became my enabler. He's like that friend when you're trying to quit who comes around with a case of beer and a bong and is just like, yo, let's get shit-faced. But instead he's like, yo, let's get successful. But herein lies another lesson. Lesson five, competition is a construct. We're now entering the mental gymnastics part of the video, so buckle up. <laughs> the triple amputee palliative care physician, BJ Miller, has this beautiful quote. At the end of life, you can let a lot of the rules that govern our daily lives fly out the window because you realize that we're walking around in systems in society. And much of what consumes most of our days is not some natural order. We're all navigating some superstructure that we humans created. And that's how I feel about work-related competition. It's just a story that we tell ourselves. The idea that we're all racing each other to be the very best is a very strong myth at the core of our culture. And also at the core of Pokemon. And it fools us into believing two big lies. The first is that there are finite resources and the second is that you don't have enough of those resources unless you have them all. On the extreme end of the scale, believing these myths results in insane wealth hoarding while like a billion people live on less than a dollar a day. But do these myths and their implication mean that competition is a useless concept? Personally, I think competition is still relevant as a contextual motivator as long as we don't emotionally internalize it. When you're playing sport, tap into it. When you leave the field, don't. But obviously this is way easier said than done. Because even if competition is just in our heads, the consequences are definitely real. You gotta pay to live, and if there are only so many jobs, then yeah, competition's real. And on top of that, a lot of people still wanna make beautiful contributions to this world, and those projects take genuine hard work. So what do you do? Well, that's where the final lesson kicks in. Lesson six, if you wanna do something that does take hard work, build a system that works for you. Work is only one part of life, and if you want that life to be rich and full, it can't be the only part of life. Same sound, but in my experience, work can also be super rewarding when you try really, really hard. So what do you do? What do you do about it? You wanna work, but you don't wanna be part of hustle culture. My solution to this problem is to work with these three simple rules. One, find a compelling reason to make things. Two, make those things sustainably. And three, assume burnout is inevitable and prepare for it. I'll expand. Finding a compelling reason wasn't really part of my system before. It was more just selfish. It was like status, money, you know, that kind of stuff. A compelling reason is something that's bigger than yourself. So this can be personal, like Homer when he's got the do it for her sign where he's doing his job for Maggie. Or it can be a big one where you clean up the Great Pacific garbage patch because you love the world so much. Whatever it is, what we're trying to do is make sure that the core of our engine is coming from an emotionally sustainable place. Remember before when I said mine was desperation? We want to take that out and make it serving other people. Yay! <laughs> But yeah, a sense of service, which I think is the opposite to the egoic gain that hustle culture seems to promise you. Money, status, power, 24 people in a camera crew following you around 24 seven. We got you blocked. Let him go, you can't see. So now that second rule, making things sustainably. For me, this boils down to creating a daily and a weekly routine that work for you. But more importantly, it's how you spend your time off. So if I can, I will try fill non-working gaps with activities that fit the following criteria. You look forward to them. They don't make you think about anything else but that activity and they don't make you worse. This third point rules out drinking my body weight in beer. Things that fit this category for me are swimming, slacklining, swimming again, <laughs> climbing, cooking, 
watching movies, anything in nature, you get it. And that third rule, assume burnout is inevitable. So from personal experience, it doesn't matter how well structured my life is, life is still unpredictable, crazy things happen and I'm only human. And what this means is that burnout is pretty much inevitable. Even if I do everything right, I'm still gonna get exhausted at some point in the year. The way that I get around this is assume it is inevitable and factor it into my plan. How? Well, this is gonna sound pretty basic, but I literally plan a holiday at the end of every year. And on this holiday, I like to use it as a chance to reset, recalibrate, figure out what did and didn't work, take a little audit, and then adjust the course accordingly. Plus it kind of gives you that light at the end of a tunnel feeling, you know, when you're working towards something. So that's nice. So those are my current three rules for working sustainably and also the six things that I've learned from not grinding all the time. You're welcome, dentists. If you want these rules and the guidelines that I use as a PDF, I've made a worksheet and it's available on the worksheet tab of my Discord. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. We're here again. So how can we sum it all up? Because hustle culture did work for me for a couple of years, I can't in all good conscience criticize its effectiveness. But I can say that I've found a more effective system. And in finding that, I've started to question being effective altogether. Within that goal of being productive, effective, efficient, whatever it is, lies the root of the problem. Hustle culture equates your worth with your work. It encourages you to focus entirely on work as opposed to everything else around you that makes your life rich. And by doing this, it slowly erodes your life until work won't save you at all. The irony there is that the goal set out by hustle culture is also ruined by hustle culture. Or put more simply, friendship ended with hustle culture. Balance is my new best friend. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new here. And also if you're keen on some more stuff about mental health, I wrote a book on it. It's called Your Head as a Houseboat. It's been described as the most important and accessible mental health book in a generation, which is a very audacious way to describe a book. Other than that, good luck with balance, I suppose, and have an incredible day. Catch ya.